Okay, now we come into a section about unusual attitudes. And this should be a review um, for what you did in your private pilot, but it may have been a while since you took that test or maybe went through some of these paces. Maybe it was your last flight review. Um, or maybe it was a book that you've been reading on the topic, but it maybe has been a while since you've looked at it. So we're going to review unusual attitudes. And um, one of the ones that uh, is very critical is the nose low unusual attitude. You know, if you were just flying along and you got a little disoriented, uh, wasn't too savvy on your instruments, wasn't having a good scan, your airplane might begin to bank off to the left or to the right. And once that happens, nose invariably will start to drop, pick up some speed, get a little over banking tendency started there, banking a little steeper, dropping the nose even further, and pretty soon you're in an unusual attitude. And you may look up and see this. So what do you do? Well, a knee-jerk reaction, and you may have had this in your training in your private pilot, a knee-jerk reaction would be to just simply pull back on the yoke, all right? Because you see what's happening here. We can see the airspeed is high and it's increasing. We see the nose is low on the attitude indicator. We see the altimeter losing altitude quickly. We see the VSI is very steeply uh, plunging us into a descent here or showing we're in a steep descent. Our heading indicator is moving clockwise. It actually shows a left arrow uh, there, but uh, what they intend to really mean here is that uh, our heading is moving toward the south. And then, of course, on the turn coordinator, we see we're in a left bank turn, which is also uh, corresponding to the left diving turn we see on the attitude indicator and, of course, confirmed by our heading indicator headings that we're changing as well. So we're in an unusual attitude, and it's a steep descending spiral. Again, knee-jerk reaction would be to just pull back. If we didn't train for this, that is what we would likely do. Well, that's going to rip your wings off, okay? It's not to be overly dramatic, but it could be because with that much airspeed, creating that much lift potential on those wings, creating that much load factor might be much more than it's willing or able to support on those wings. So this could bend some metal. This could get past your limit load for the aircraft. So we want to be very careful about this and not overreact. We don't want to react on an emotion, but what we want to do is we want to react on training and the training that we've had. So it's hard to do, in fact, but once you see the situation, you want to do this in order of power idle. We don't need any more thrust. We have plenty of airspeed. We're descending, so we want to take that power out of the equation. Uh, next, we want to level the wings. Okay, And by leveling the wings, what we're going to do is we're going to take off some of the load factor it would take to raise this aircraft up to a level attitude. Now we can we can power idle and just pull the nose up in a banked attitude, but remember how much additional lift it takes when you're in a turn, right? Just to remain level, not much, uh, not to say even bringing the plane up to a level attitude from a, a descending attitude. So it's going to take an excessive amount of load or lift in order to get this airplane to come up to a level attitude with the wings banked. So if we bring the wings to level, then my lift is acting what? Purely vertical now. It's not doing two jobs. Lift is just doing one job. It's just going straight up opposing weight. So I will be more productive in this plane getting it to level out and not overloading and stressing the wings out by bringing the wings to level. Wings level, and then pitch up. And again, that takes a lot of discipline. That's why you have to train it, uh, to train this quite a bit and to ingrain this in you so that you don't make the uh, classic mistake of just pulling out of the dive. Well, the other um, situation would be a nose high unusual attitude, whereas the previous one, the concern or danger was overstressing the aircraft too much speed, too much load. Uh, on the aircraft, uh, especially when you're trying to level it out. Uh, in this one, it is not anything about load, but it is about potentially stalling the airplane. So what we can see here is that we have a tapering off uh, airspeed. So our airspeed is decreasing. We have a nose high right turn. We have gaining in our alt we're gaining in our altimeter. We're also increasing our vertical speed here, showing that we're climbing. We are moving to the right, is what this is trying to tell us. So we're moving toward the north, and we're in a right bank turn here is confirmed. One thing, however, is we're fairly well coordinated, so let's celebrate what we can. So in this situation, 
what we need to do is avert the stall that is impending. And what that what we need to do is just nose down, in other words, pitch to level, apply full power if we don't have that already. Let's bring the power up and wings to level. Now what's unique about this is in the previous example it was very important in this nose low unusual attitude to do all of these three steps in the correct order. First things first. okay, And that was to avoid overstressing the aircraft. In this situation we're not stressing the aircraft so we can do all three at the same time. It really doesn't matter. We certainly prioritize getting the nose down. That's going to be very important to decrease that angle of attack, start picking up some speed, but power is going to help that as well. And so uh, this can be done all together in the nose high unusual attitude recovery. Okay. Now, what about if you have an unusual attitude situation, partial panel as we call it? Probably didn't practice this in your private pilot training, but you certainly will in your instrument training. Well, you have a lot less information to go off of. You still have the other instruments, the supporting instruments, these performance instruments to try to piece together what is actually going on. Okay, But if we cover up in a traditional six-pack situation, if we cover up the two center uh, instruments, we'll be losing our attitude indicator, we'll be losing our heading indicator, and what this would simulate is a vacuum system failure. Okay, Because typically this would be a vacuum system driven uh, instrumentation here with our attitude indicator and our heading indicator. So if we lose the vacuum pump, somehow we lose the uh, vacuum pressure, well then these two instruments are going to go uh, haywire. They may not go blank unless you're in a digital situation, uh, which can actually make it a little bit more challenging because the instruments might slowly wind down as that gyro is still spinning and cause some slow death, if you will, of the instrument. And that's something to talk about with your instructor and to understand how that could work. If you're in glass, well, it's a whole different situation. Uh, if you're flying a G1000 or, or an Avidyne or something like that. Well, let's look at what's actually happening here. What do we see? We see that we have an in, a decreasing airspeed again. Okay, so it's right away, I, I, one of the most important gauges I think to look at or instruments to look at in the cockpit on an unusual attitude situation, full panel or partial, would be your airspeed indicator. Okay, Now there's a chance that it could have some erroneous readings, but typically that is going to be a great gauge to say, hey, what's going on? Am I overspeeding the aircraft, getting into a stressful situation, or am I underspeeding? In other words, am I flying uh, toward a stall? situation. In this case, we're decreasing airspeed, so we're probably nose up toward a stall. We can confirm that with the gain in altitude and the uh, VSI indicating a climb. We also see over here, we've got the only indication that we're turning at all. Of course, we might have a, a, a compass, but that's not usually as reliable when we're moving around and turning. Uh, but we can see here that we're fairly, again, um, well coordinated. That's a plus. But we've got a right turn. So it appears that we're in a right banked nose high attitude. And by just, again, going through that quick process, we can kind of determine, OK, we're going to need to lower the pitch, bring that nose down, add power, and level the wings here. Now the only problem with this is we don't have any attitude indicator to know what level flight is. And so what you want to do is you want to pitch down till you see the reversal of the trend of the altimeter and the VSI. And when that needle goes through, especially on the VSI, through zero, then you've achieved a level flight attitude at that point. But you might be passing it up, so you want to reverse your yoke position again. So if you just push forward as the needle goes through zero, you want to pull back. Again, a little bit of back pressure and that needle might reverse and go up a little slightly into a climb. Again, push forward slightly and back and forth, back and forth on the yoke. You'll be bracketing these with ever smaller inputs until you've found that sweet spot all the while checking over here for your wings level. So uh, that is an example of an unusual attitude uh, with a partial panel situation. Now, some other things that they want you to know about is inoperative instruments and what to do. How do you recognize that and what would you do? So determine which to determine which instrument is inoperative, what you need to do is you need to find out which instrument is in conflict with the other. So since we talked about all the instruments that agree that a change in pitch has occurred or all the instruments that agree that a change in bank has occurred, assuming we're, we're having a full panel at this moment, um, there ought to be a way to then to isolate one 
or maybe more instruments that don't seem to line up and agree with the other pitch instruments or line up and agree with the other bank instruments. Okay, So knowing what your pitch and bank clusters are, that's good, but you also want to consider uh, what the instrument source of power is. So in a moment ago on the partial panel I, I mentioned that if you lose your vacuum system on a typical light aircraft you just lost your two gyro attitude indicator and your gyro heading indicator uh, instrument. So that would be a vacuum failure. So that would make sense. Uh, pitot-static system. And we saw that the pitot-static system um, involved three instruments. The airspeed indicator. What else? The altimeter and the vertical speed indicator. Um, and then the electrical system. Which, which one of the six-pack instruments do you remember that utilizes electrical power in a typical standard six-pack uh, analog instrument aircraft? If you said the turn coordinator, you're right, absolutely. That's the gyro that spins that uh, rate of turn indication on the turn coordinator, and that's electrically operated. All right, well, let's do some pop quizzes, speaking of the written test, for you. And uh, this is, again, taking from the Glime study guide, uh, chapter 2, question number 45. At the time of this recording, it's 45. That may change when you watch this. Uh, what is the correct sequence for recovery from the unusual attitude indicated in the figure below? I'm going to let you look at this for just a moment, read through A, B, and C answers, and then why don't you pause the uh, recording right here and when you unpause I'll we'll go through the answers okay so what we have here is let's take a look at the drawing we've got a high airspeed so right away is one of the most important instruments I like to look at is my airspeed indicator and I can see it's high which means likely my nose is low I'm in a dive I'm in a descending spiral because I also look next door here and I see my next instrument I like to look at I've got the nose below the horizon and I'm in a right bank turn about 30 degrees at this point so I can tell I'm in a descending right spiral uh, my altimeter is is maybe going down perhaps I'm in a descent over here confirmed by the VSI and my my heading indicator is showing us a turn toward the north. Now this one's a little different from the previous drawing I showed you. Uh, not to confuse you, but this is now the arrow is showing this way it means that the whole card is turning counterclockwise. And if it does, then my headings are increasing. I'm actually going toward the north and then toward the east. As this, imagine if I were to just move this card magically around this way, we would be having an increase. And I apologize, the previous drawing showed it a little differently, and I had to try to explain that difference to you. But that's uh, this is from the uh, written test from the FAA. Now, this, this over here on our turn coordinator shows us in a right bank as well, or at least a right turn. So we have some confirmations here. It appears that we're in a descending right bank our, our heading is moving toward the north and we need to do something about it. So the question is, what should we do? A, should we reduce power, increase the back pressure, then level the wings? Or B, should we reduce power, level the wings, and then pitch up to level flight? Or C, should we level the wings first, pitch up to level, and then obtain the desired airspeed? What did you say it was? If you said answer B, you were absolutely correct. Good job. If you weren't sure why that is the right answer, remember we said that the descending spiral is very critical because you're picking up a lot of speed. That's a lot of possible energy on those wings. And as soon as you start pulling back, increasing the back pressure, increasing the angle of attack on those wings, all of that lift made from that excess airspeed is going to go make some load factor. And it's going to put some stress on your wings on the aircraft and that could really do some potential damage here so we don't want to pull back right away and so what we're going to do is first reduce the power we don't need any more thrust then we're going to level the wings and boy everything in you wants to not do that everything in you wants to pitch up but you must level the wings first with that patience okay and by doing that just picture aerodynamically that drawing of the lift vector acting straight up perpendicular to your wings as you level the wings out from the turn and now your wings are level as you pull back all that lift is that lift vector is extremely productive in pulling you up out of the dive opposing the weight vector because it's purely vertical 
right? There's no excessive amount of lift force that you need to give it in order to level out. That would be the case if you were in a turn. You'd have to give it excess lift to just pull it up vertically, okay? So that's why we go to wings level and then we can see fit to start pitching up to level. And let me also say you want to do that very gently, very gently. You don't want to do an abrupt pull uh, because of that, again, excessive speed. Let's look at another one. Okay. This question, number 47, says identify the system that has failed and determine a corrective action to return the airplane to straight and level flight. So in this case, we're looking at a full panel situation, uh, but we believe that we might have an inoperative instrument or two here, and this is where we need to compare them against each other. So take a look at the drawing, uh, take a look at the answers A, B, C, and why don't you pause right here, and when you come back, we'll talk about it. Okay. So let's take a look at what we have here. Again, my favorite instrument to check our airspeed is really high and it shows it's on the increase. Not too good of a situation, but right away I got a little conflict because we got a high airspeed and then we see a nose high right bank turn. Hmm, that doesn't seem to agree with the airspeed indicator. So one of the two is a problem. Let's look a little further. Next door to that we see the altimeter is on the increase. Hmm, so, so that kind of jives with our uh, attitude indicator as a nose high situation. Notice the VSI also confirms we're climbing. So right now I'm feeling pretty good on these three pitch instruments. Remember our four cluster of pitch instruments was the airspeed, the attitude, the uh, altimeter, and the VSI, all four of these. So right now three of them agree that we're in a nose high situation. One of them says we're nose low in a dive. Uh, let's see, we're, this shows we're in a right bank turn. This shows if the, again, the heading indicator is rotating counterclockwise. That means we're increasing our headings toward the north. And here, again, we show a right bank turn, which confirms. So all five of these instruments are agreeing. I believe the airspeed indicator is wrong. So more than likely, what that means is something is wrong with our pitot tube. We may have a block pitot tube. Let's take a look at the answers. A, pitot slash static block, okay. Lower the nose, level the wings, and return the attitude to a level. Okay. And B says the vacuum system failed. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, then our attitude and heading indicators would be compromised, and they don't seem to be. So I'm going to move on to the next one uh, here, which says, and, and by the way, reducing power doesn't sound like a great idea, does it? Even if that were the case, because uh, if you thought the airspeed was really high like this, then then in fact you might want to reduce the power. But it appears by everything else is that we're climbing and we're pitched up pretty high. So more than likely we need to pitch down and and uh, add power. But let's look at C. Electrical system has failed. Well, the only one of these six that are electrical, as we said a moment ago, is the turn coordinator gyro. So that really doesn't seem to be having a problem. So I'm going to put my money on A. We have a pitot uh, block, and in fact, if you said A, you were absolutely correct. And what we need to do is lower the nose, level the wings. Remember, we can do that all at the same time. Consider adding some power and return our attitude indicator to what appears to look like level uh, flight.